Ranking all 15 Call of Duty games since Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanted to do a top 15 list on my top 15 favorite Call of Duty since COD 4 was released. There's so many things that I wanna say about these games and I did not write any pointers besides listing which one there is. So I know there's gonna be points that I wish I had made about these games. So I'm just gonna to have to accept that I cannot say everything that's on my head but that's just gonna be the way it is. I'm just gonna be saying why I put them in the order that I did. Let's jump into number 15, and this is Call of Duty Ghosts. Now, I was actually surprised that this one was actually gonna be number 15. There's only two Call of Duties, in my opinion, that literally feel unfinished, like they were literally in the middle of creating it and they just had to just put it out unfinished, and Ghosts is one of them. It doesn't have anything that makes me want to play it. The maps are terrible. They made the maps really big, but then they closed off the lines of sight. So it's like you have these huge maps and just no open areas anywhere you go. They made the kill streaks all really weak. They gave you like support members. So now you have like AI guys. The gun balance was really basic in this game. There was like two good ARs. There was like one or two extra guns in this. This just was so incomplete. And typically I'm a guy who likes Infinity War style games. So it was kind of weird for me to put this dead last just for how incomplete it is. And it's almost impossible to have fun because of the flow of the maps, the flow of the kill streaks. It's just not fun. Number 15, Call of Duty Ghosts. Number 14, this is gonna be Call of Duty World War II. Now, I absolutely hated this game. This is the first game after the boost jumping. Now, I'm the first guy to admit it. I hated the boost jumping. Um, you know, almost all the boost jumping games are completely forgotten from people's memories. It's almost like people don't even wanna talk about them. They're just, don't mention them. You talk about once after or before. This was the first game after the boost jumping and it just showed off how if they don't have any good ideas, just making a simple boots on the ground is terrible. And there was nothing really new to get involved with. They had this like uh, perk or something to where you get all your kill streaks even if you die. So everybody has the best kill streaks in the game every game and they didn't have to do anything. Um, the maps are terrible. Like Vanguard has very similar maps to where it's like, it's ridiculously spawn trappy and small to the point where you, you can't even really enjoy it because it's just so spawn trappy, you know? And then on top of that, WW2 had these terrible, simple three lane maps with again, no lines of sight. This was a big thing for many years in Call of Duty, three lane maps, no big lines of sight. I just absolutely hated WW2. On top of that, it had insane skill-based matchmaking. So you're on these little simple maps with nothing new to really do, fighting the best players just over and over, and you've fought these gunfights a million times in a row, and it's just, oh man, WW2. I remember literally just going to work every day so mad after playing this game that I literally had to stop because of how little enjoyment I got of it and how much I just hated it every day. All right, number 13 is Black Ops 4. Now, Black Ops 4 is the other game, in my opinion, that is the only one of two that feels actually incomplete at the start. Black Ops 4, it should have been a good game. I think that they were confused with Blackout and they had David Vonderhaar who created Black Ops 3 go, you know, move towards Blackout. So just some random people made Black Ops 4. It just doesn't have any of the love. It just feels so incomplete. It just feels so bleh. Like they, it needed more time. It needed more ideas. It shipped with very, very little maps and a few remakes. It didn't have like the haters kill streak I think till later on it just wasn't fun then you had the healing thing and I think that was to get people on board with blackout because you're gonna have to heal in blackout but black ops 4 was probably the game I gave up on the easiest like I wasn't even frustrated I just gave up like this is just boring dumb and it's like I said it's one of two games on this entire list that actually feels incomplete fully at launch all right guys, number 12 is Black Ops Cold War. Now, Black Ops Cold War is a game that I just have no interest in playing. Like I could barely 
play it if there was no skill-based matchmaking. But once you put the skill-based matchmaking in it, it's like, this is the dumbest thing that I've ever played. It's so stupid. Everybody moves around so quick. All the guns have no recoil. The guns in Cold War have like the least recoil by far of any guns ever. Like the Milano didn't move. The M16, nothing moved. It was just like, I think it was trying to counter the Cronus Zen. I don't know, but this game was just not fun. Very simple maps, basic maps, just not fun to play. Um, then on top of that, the skill-based matchmaking just puts the nail in the coffin. Um, no thank you with this one. I only really played zombies to level up the guns for Warzone. All right, number 11 is Infinite Warfare. Of all the double jumping games, if this game was made as boots on the ground, I think this would have been the best of the three jumping games had it been made boots on the ground. So before this, uh, Infinity War did Ghosts, and then after this, they did Modern Warfare. Ghosts and Modern Warfare are like really campy, slow, it's trying to be so realistic that it loses some of the arcadey feel. But Infinite Warfare, it, it was a quicker engine. It was, it was a little bit more smooth. It was a little bit more close to like Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 3, but it had the double jumping. And the double jumping just absolutely killed this game because there was really little challenging things to do while double jumping. You didn't have to do it to go to a unique area. You barely had to use it. People would just spam double jump because it was hard to hit. And then on top of that, the double jump was the exact same as Black Ops 3. And I understand Black Ops 3 was probably the best double jumping game. I'll give you that one. So everybody who has played Black Ops 3 is instantly going to be 100% savvy with the jumping. And I feel like that kind of takes away from the learning curve and it just doesn't make it fun. I really think if this game, Infinite Warfare, had been boots on the ground, it would have been absolutely great. The maps were okay. You'd have to see them on boots on the ground, but they had a couple really interesting things here, like that perk in Warzone where it flashes yellow when somebody's looking at you. That was created in this game. I thought that was a totally interesting new idea to put in the game. If somebody's looking at you while you're looking away, it flashes yellow. I loved that. They also had the phase shift, and I just thought phase shift was just an absolutely brilliant idea where you hit this button and you're invisible, no one can see you, and you can't see anybody else for 10 seconds. And I just thought that was just an unbelievably fun new mechanic to check out. I just love the ideas behind it. They had a few good ideas here. I just think boots on the ground absolutely, or double jumping absolutely killed it. All right, guys, number 10 is Advanced Warfare. Now, the only reason this one's probably a little bit higher is because double jumping was fresh and new, so everyone had to get used to it. Everyone had to kind of figure out the best, most abusive ways to use it, so it took a little while. And I did have a little bit of a good squad for Search and Destroy, and pretty much the people that I play with now, I kind of met around them. Like anybody before Advanced Warfare, like I haven't really stayed friends with, or if we do, I almost never really play with them. It had actually some really good search and destroy. I think it was like six rounds. It was a pretty terrible game, 100%. And I think the double jumping should have been worked around a little better. At least it wasn't boring like WW2. At least it was like, okay, it's fresh and new and not just like boring, like Black Ops 4, boring. W too boring. All right, number nine is the new one, Call of Duty Vanguard. Now this game really sucks, don't get me wrong. I only played it for maybe 20 to 30 hours, but it's bad, don't get me wrong, it's bad. But it's boots on the ground, it uses the Modern Warfare engine, which is the best engine that we've had so far. Like, I don't want to see any other engine besides the Modern Warfare engine. They did some new stuff with the guns, so it's going to take a little while for everyone to master the guns. Um, I like that it has 16 maps on launch. I do think that the combat pacing is kind of backfiring, though. Like, you pick which combat pacing you want, and it doesn't even give you that. It gives you a random one. So what's the point of even having that pacing? And then certain maps, it's like 15 spawn traps on one map when you get the combat pacing with all the people. There needs to be that perfect pace where a spawn trap could happen, 
but not like five or six people are just looking at people spawn. I just didn't like that. Definitely not a good game, but I had to inch it just a hair over the other ones. Number eight is Modern Warfare 2019. Now this one could have been and should have been number one, but for those terrible glaring issues, it is just a miserable game to play. The map design is weird. I don't like when they design maps for like 10v10 and then I play them in a 6v6. Like Call of Duty needs to have these tight maps where it's not too small and it's not too big. If it's at all too big or if it's at all too small, it's a really miserable experience. And so many of the maps are just designed for 10v10 and they just don't work for this game. The skill-based matchmaking, oh my goodness. This game would have probably shot up a few points if there was no skill-based matchmaking. And then on top of that, there's uh, it's this cross-play in this game. So there's like a bunch of benefits that controller players have. And there's a bunch of benefits that PC players have, namely uh, the field of view. And then uh, the controller players get the aim assist. So there's this big gigantic gap in people's hardwares that wasn't there before. You know, normally I would play with somebody on PS4. We have this same everything, you know. Now I'm playing a guy with PC, maybe he has a controller. So now he has this crazy FOV, you know, getting 200 frames a second and all this stuff and I gotta play against him. And then the game doesn't really make it fair for each one. It's just like, oh, he's he's got the better system where he's just gonna beat you. This Modern Warfare 2019, it should have been the best and it is where it is at number eight. All right, number seven is World at War. Now this is probably the game that I have the least experience with, but I definitely have played it for at least a few weeks, like really hardcore religiously playing it. I know I beat the campaign. I checked out a lot of the multiplayer maps, but again, this is the one that I have the least experience with, but it takes that good COD 4 formula and doesn't really do too much new with it, but it gives us another version of that great COD 4 formula, having kill streaks, first time bringing in zombies, first time bringing in dogs. Uh, I remember the hit detection was pretty good. Um, certain other games, hit detection gets really bad, but it was actually pretty good here. The maps, I think, were a good size too. I'm really picky about map size, and I think the maps were pretty good at World at War. Just a very, very solid entry for me. All right, guys, number six is Black Ops 3. Now, again, we've kind of forgotten about all the double jumping games, but this was by far the best double jumping game. And I have a buddy of mine who always says, like, this is the last game that was actually good because there was actually a lot of camaraderie on this game. There was a lot of, you know, people getting together, squatting up, meeting new people, just that classic Call of Duty vibes. Um, I also absolutely loved the swimming in this game. I love when they add an extra aspect to something you have to learn that affects the game. I think it was a perfect addition. I think swimming should be in almost every Call of Duty and it just gives the maps such an extra level of depth. Um, I think the kill streaks here were very, very strong, like very in your face. You got the hater on launch. It was the best double jumping game and it's kind of hard because it's like i don't know if i would change the double jumping aspect to it because i actually thought that it was unique but it's unfortunate that it's kind of forgotten in the double jumping era i think black ops 3 was actually really really good all right guys number five is call of duty 4. now this just laid the groundwork for everything that we love about this game i think a lot of this stuff was very innovative i loved having all the different perks I loved the, the map size in here was pretty good. Most of the maps in here are pretty good. There's nothing that's actually too big. There are a few maps that they have like a lot of abusive angles and things like that, like Bog and a couple other ones to where it's like, if you're gonna make those maps today, you should put a, a couple more spots to defend yourself, you know? But for it being released back then and people not knowing all the abusive stuff, it wasn't nearly as bad because everyone's still learning, you know, nobody just memorizes the best stuff yet. Um, the hit detection was very, very good in this game. The first game with kill streaks, good hit detection and good maps, like that almost sells it pretty much right there for me. Came up with the Modern Warfare story, price, things like that. So Call of Duty 4, super good. Really enjoy it, really appreciate it. Obviously, there was a couple other things we would want more in it nowadays, but it's so solid. 
All right, guys, number four, most people's number one is Black Ops 2. Now, I really enjoyed Black Ops 2. I absolutely pretty much hated it when it came out and the whole life cycle. And later on, I've grown to appreciate it. Pretty much everybody knows everything good about Black Ops 2. Most of the good stuff about Black Ops 2 that people like was things that was copied from Modern Warfare 2. Like uh, Black Ops 2 had Noob 2, so does Modern Warfare 2. Uh, Black Ops 2 has crazy kill streaks, same as Modern Warfare 2. Black Ops 2 has tactical insertions, same as Modern Warfare 2. You know, uh, all the guns in Black Ops 2 are overpowered. Well, not overpowered, but they're really effective and strong, same as Modern Warfare 2. So it's like, what, what new thing did it do? Like, well, I'll tell you what Black Ops 2 did new. It made all the maps tiny three lane which I just can't stand. I can understand it from a developer standpoint because it's super, super easy to make those maps. Just three lanes, don't have to think too much. But it just ruins the game with these little three lane maps and these little lines of sight. Everything is kind of blocked off. You know, there was no real big lines of sight. And then on top of that, this game had one of the like worst lag compensations that I've ever played with in your life. So you have these three lane maps without these lines of sight. So you're having the same gunfights over and over because there's not much variety because there's no open spaces. Like, you know, when you're in one area, there's a few places you have a gunfight and you have those gunfights over and over. And then on top of that, it's really, really laggy. You know what I mean? So every game that has used like a modification of the Black Ops 2 engine has been super laggy. Black Ops 2 might have been like the most laggy game that I ever played. And on top of that, they had these one videos where you'd be crouched and then the guy would literally, he would stand up and crouch down and on your screen, he never he never even stands up because there was that much there's that much lag in the game. You know what I mean? So uh, there's a lot of stuff I like about it, but almost everything I like about it was something that was already done in Modern Warfare 2. Very solid game, lots of camaraderie. Don't have anything to say about it. I just think that people like it a lot more than I personally do. All right, guys, number three is Modern Warfare 3. Now, this is the game that I played the most, so it's kind of hard for me not even to put it in my number one, but I just absolutely love this game. Admittedly, the base game wasn't as good as the game with the DLCs. Um, I feel like all the DLC maps were absolutely fantastic here. Um, us, lots of them should have been in the main game, like uh, Overwatch comes to one, Black Box comes to one, um, a few other ones just that had relatively good lag compensation like this game would lag more than other call of duties but it wasn't as bad as black ops 2. Um, these maps were smaller on the base than other call of duties but black ops 2 made them even smaller than here so although it is getting smaller it is kind of taking a step in the wrong direction the maps still were very good and some of the dlc maps were huge like there's this one on an oil rig that was just gigantic um, I actually love the face-off modes here. Like I would actually play the face-off modes almost religiously for a few years after. Love the themes of them. Uh, the sniping was pretty good. There was a pretty good weapon balance. The only real cons is that it had a little bit of lag and um, you did have these support streaks that really were terrible. Like you got a free EMP and a free stealth bomber. Really didn't like that, but overall, I just really, really liked Modern Warfare 3. It's definitely the game I've jumped the most in. I think I had like 100 days played on it. All right, guys, number two is the original Black Ops. Now, I'm going to be talking mostly about multiplayer, obviously, but Black Ops and my number one, they're almost as perfect as you possibly could get. The whole idea and feel of the game, like it has a unique feel, all the characters, the vibe of the story, um, the maps, the maps were perfect size. There's so many classic maps we've taken from this game. They're not too big, but they're not too small. Like just classic maps, great ideas. They also had a lot of innovative things that they did differently here. I know some of the, I think it was the first time we got a napalm strike kill streak. Um, I think there was lots of interesting gadgets. I think this is the first time we got a decoy grenade. You could actually put like a camera in this one. So like, you could literally go put a camera somewhere and then run across the map and it'll show you like what that camera sees. And it's like, when has that been in any other Call of Duty? And to me, I like all these out of the box ideas because if I get bested, right? I like when there's something where like, oh, well I could have done something else. 
Like I, I could have put that camera over there and seen it. There's something I could have done and that makes me want to play the game more. When there's not enough options and I'm just pushed into a corner with no options, that's when I don't really like it as much. But it did have a little bit of lag, I'm not gonna lie. But I just absolutely like this game. It wasn't as, as, it didn't have as much like guns and options as something like Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 3, but I just loved the music of it. I liked Ice Cube. I just liked the whole, it was like a perfectly well-balanced vibe. The maps were probably one, top one or two maps of all Call of Duties as well. Just gotta say it, Black Ops number two. All right guys, number one, you sure already know by process of elimination what it is and that is Modern Warfare 2. Now, the main thing people are gonna say about Modern Warfare 2 is like, oh, you, you know, you don't remember how it was. Oh, if it gets remastered, it's gonna be bad. Okay, if there's things that are actually broken in the game and we can all agree on them, patch them. Um, as you guys may know, this game was almost never patched. It was patched like, I mean, they gave us some DLCs and they, I think they patched one of the shotguns one time. But um, this game is just, oh, it's just perfection. The Modern Warfare engine, the vibe, like the vibe in this game is just better than COD 4 and it's better than Modern Warfare 3. I don't know what it is. It's like the sound, the, the vibes, like um, it just feels like it's, it was meant to be like the perfect game, like the one Call of Duty to, to end all Call of Duties we don't need to make any more. The maps, I love the map size, the variety here. I um, loved all the different guns, all the different ideas. I understand something like One Man Army is like, completely busted, but I like the idea of, but I always like when there's an option, there's something I could have done to get out of the situation. And when you have one man army, it's like, oh, well, that just opens up so many doors. Obviously you have to balance it, you know, but it just opens up so many doors, like having all these crazy kill streaks. Like Modern Warfare 2 started off the kill streak craze. Like they could have given us half these kill streaks and we would have been fine, but they just went overkill. So fun to use so many different, like actual useful perks. Like obviously things need balancing, like a commando lunge, okay, it needs balancing. But just everything was effective. You know, every perk was like, you know, last stand. Whatever you used was just really, really effective. Absolutely love this game. My favorite maps, good hit detection the most classic vibes for any Call of Duty ever. But anyways, guys, let me know what your favorite Call of Duties are. I'd be very interested to see down below. Uh, we're all gonna have our favorites, and you know, the older I get, the less people will even have played these games. Maybe people are starting in WW2. I actually know a lot of people who like WW2, and as you could tell, I really don't like it. But anyways, guys, we're on the road to 50,000 subscribers, and I couldn't do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully you're having a great day at home. See you all in the next video. Peace.